We are back on the wing and I finished the ailerons. I don't know if I said that already. I didn't check the last video. And the flaps, which are safe and sound on the little shelf over here. And basically did all the wiring and the plumbing for the pitot tube. And kind of went ahead and just put a grommet that fits these. I believe it's like a 5 8 grommet, similar to that. And safety wire. I have the uh, red for pedo and blue for the angle of attack indicator because we're doing the Garmin. And the 14 gauge twisted wire is for the heat of the pedo tube. Then I ran two shielded 20 gauge triple three times 20 gauge shielded cable for the lights that go on the wing tips meaning the navigation lights and the strobe lights as well as the landing lights i uh, went back and forth if that was enough some people are like no it's 18 some are like uh some guy said 14 but anyway i confirmed it with randy and i also confirmed it with aero leds uh, the manufacturer of them and their website so 20 gauge is sufficient and the third wire i'm going to use the shield as a ground which that was questionable too but uh, that's the way you do it and i'm using the third wire as a sink wire for the wig wags or sinking the strobes okay so the day has come to try and move the wing skins from the floor onto the table without putting the infamous smileys in it they warned us on that at the workshop and we're going to try and do it. Of course, the wing skins that we need, the upper ones are on the bottom. So the plan is to slide them out this way. The plan is to go out and somehow lift them and put them on there. I made my little jig out of HDPE, uh, it's a nylon type material, high density polyethylene stuff I use at work, and it's three quarter inch thick. Uh, I actually made two to make it an inch and a half if need be, but we'll see if the three quarter works. So I noticed when I was trying to put it on this way, that it would kind of like cut into there, where I may have had a little jagged edge from the bandsaw anyway. So what I found is uh, I put it all the way in this way and then just kind of start it with my hand. To get it all the way in. And then you just want to make sure it remains in. So we're two and three quarter inches away from the table. Basically, I think I'm doing it right. It feels right. Just puts the slightest crease on there. I won't bore you with doing all of them. The wing skins will have the print on opposite sides from each other. This is so that the print can be left inside the skin and won't have to be removed. I wish they wouldn't put that in there because that's a bunch of baloney. I pretty much spent the entire evening shuffling back and forth all my skins, upper and lower, risking bending them just to find out that either I have two left skins and two right skins, but only half of them put the writing on the inside. Uh, I ended up confirming this with my brother who is building an S21 as well and just finished his wings. And he just laughed as soon as I asked him the question. But um, I wouldn't have been so hung up if, if it wasn't blatantly in the manual there. Uh, and I guess the other reason is I, I'm using common sense that I just was hesitant to bend the edge on it because I didn't want to have to pay for a new skin, never mind the skin, the shipping to get it here. So I held off. But if anybody else is hung up on this, I can confirm 
that the writing is not on the inside of the skin, or at least only on half of them. So after shuffling all my wing skins back and forth from the floor over there, onto the bench, and back down, I ended up uh, with 99.99999% certainty that I got the right bottom skin rolled the right way. So I only did it for the uh, left wing right now. And uh, also the stringers I had to cut in there. Uh, I came up with cutting three and a half inches off for a total of nine foot, eight and a half inch length. These are the three stringers that run inside there, this guy here. And what happens is they are a little bit long, like I said, about three and a half inches too long. So they hit the last rib before the gas tank. And I basically just measured a quarter inch from the last hole to match the outboard edge, outboard end, and uh, did that. So now we're ready to we go. I'm just excited with the wing skin on it. It looks uh, looks like a wing. It is a sea of Clecos. I was wondering if I even had enough, but I do, I think. And <clears throat> we uh, lined up the D spar with the wing as square as possible, or hopefully it's 100% square, um, going by the edge of the skin, and transfer drilled all of these number 30s going all the way across. And the next step is going to be uh, taking the front four off and uh, dimpling these and, and countersinking the spar, and dimpling the skin and cleaning out and deburring. I also put in Clecos on primarily every third one for the stringers going all the way across and every second one for the ribs. And it all fits, I'm pretty excited. Well, that was just super exciting watching me drill all those holes but um, you can be happy that I didn't film drilling all 103 match drilled holes that go across this front spar and what I did is I took this piece out of uh, one of the I don't know this other piece that we had that we weren't supposed to use uh, from the rudder there we go Kilo Papa Romeo Delta 0107. I just cut a notch out. It's just a tad bit thinner than this lip, but uh, it allowed me to not put the micro stop tilting upward. And uh, what else? There's something else I was just gonna say, but uh, I think that was it for my my tips, so to say. Here's something else that I just came across. <clears throat> I was struggling to get these tank supports in, and. Uh, if you look closely, <laughs> they look symmetrical, but they're not. 
So if you see, if you have it right here, the holes will line up. But if you flip it this way, the center holes line up, everything but where it goes onto the ribs. But look how far the ribs are off. You can see that's almost an eighth of an inch off. Now these holes are lined up and this one isn't. So watch out for that. I don't know if they're all like that, but in my case, these are directional. So I'm gonna put a little arrow that says root. Once again, my beloved GoPro camera froze up. Last time I lost uh, media that my friend George is trying to recover. So it kind of impacts my video coverage, but uh, I started riveting all the countersunk rivets across the top here and then figured out how to unfreeze my camera. So hopefully it will continue. But tonight is riveting night and my arm already hurts. Those were the stainless steel ones. And the other ones are all AAPT 41s. AAPQ 41s. This is kind of where you. Uh, Reminiscent of all the friends that were like, wow, cool, you're building an airplane. I want to come help. This would be a good time to help. Until now, it's always been a lot of thinking, so I was going pretty slow. We're concentrating. But you have to wonder how many of those friends would come now. <laughs> We're gonna rivet everything except for rib number one. That's why the blue tape is there. And the last four rows on the trailing edge because they're gonna have to line up with the gap seals. So all of this is gonna get done, I think. So I'm not sure if uh, I'm happy I got halfway through or disappointed I didn't finish it, but uh, I think it's been like two or three hours and my arm just hurts anyway from work. Over 300 rivets, if I counted them right, there's 103 in the front edge, 59 I believe for each stringer, and I did like nine on each of the ribs so far plus the tank supports at that end. And uh, it looks really good, but I can't help and think of what an antiquated way of building something. Um, I know it's proven and it's cheap and it's effective and it works, but my God, 